in about 20 minutes. News of a victory in the war on terror, officials confirming the death of Mullah Gadula, the most prominent Taliban military commander in Afghanistan. Authorities showing the terrorist body to reporters this morning. Joining us now, P.J. Crowley in Washington. He's a former special assistant to the President for National Security Affairs. Welcome. Nice to have you here. Good morning. Let's focus on the death this morning. Do you think this is going to force the Taliban into any type of retreat or simply embolden that group to seek revenge against the U.S.? Well, I, I don't think it's going to do either one. Uh, obviously, any time you're able to, uh, to kill the opposition's uh, military leader, that's good. It's useful. It doesn't necessarily change the uh, strategic capabilities that are currently helping the Taliban operate. You know, within uh, within Afghanistan, they have the terrorist safe haven along the border between Afghanistan and and Pakistan. They have outside and inside sources of financial support from drugs inside Afghanistan, from uh, private co contributions from the Gulf outside. You know, they're able to operate within pa uh, within Afghanistan because the central government only controls a relatively small swath of territory, uh, and, and ultimately they succeed by by not getting defeated. I mean, this. The real burden is on the Afghan government to be able to deliver uh, on assistance to the Afghan people and have you know, public support turn decisively in their favor. If that happens, the Taliban will not be successful, but if the people stay on the fence, then the Taliban will continue to be able to function as they currently are. But so far, the Afghan government has been hampered by its efforts to try to make a difference in this ongoing uh, fight in the war on terror. Well, I mean, the good news is they know that they have a finite window of time. Uh, the Afghan ambassador to the United States was the Center for American Progress, where I work uh, on Friday, and he recognizes that they have about a year or two to be able to deliver, you know, concretely on the promises that, uh, that they have made to the Afghan people. Uh, we have to be in a position to help them. One of the problems, you know, when you talk about uh, what the international community can do, what the United States can do, to help build capacity within the Afghan government. This is where the shift, uh, you know, four years ago from attention to Afghanistan to Iraq makes a difference. We are now spending upwards of $9 billion a month in Iraq. We're spending only about $1 to $2 billion a month in Afghanistan. And this is where our shift of focus and shift of resources has really left, uh, you know, the Afghan government without the international support it needs in its view to succeed. Do you think there is the political will from the international community along with the United States to see this thing through? That's a very good question. And, and uh, unfortunately, you're now six years into the enterprise in Afghanistan. We have to guard against, you know, fatigue. Uh, this is a long-term proposition. Uh, you know, Afghanistan, when we entered in 2001, was recognized as one of the poorest countries on earth. Uh, we have to really build a functioning society from scratch, uh, and we have to be able to be able to sustain that over time. And unfortunately, you know, through a combination of, of, of aspects, you know, you're, you're not necessarily seeing the same international focus on Afghanistan six years later uh, that is necessary if, you're, if we're going to help the Karzai government ultimately succeed. Indeed. Uh, P.J. Crowley, always a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much for your insights. A pleasure. Well, it's preparation.